Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, thank you for joining us on February for our February webinar. Um, we'll get started straight away. Uh, as I know, a lot of you have questioned about this webinar and want us to get straight in. So that is precisely what I endeavor to do. So thank you for everyone for joining. As we normally start, we start with a reflection from a, a couple of verses. The verses which I've chosen for this webinar uh, are from Surat al-Zumar, um, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about those who know. So this is in the context of self-awareness. So the verse goes, Aman uh, huwa kanitan, or the, the person who is obedient, kanitan, ana leyle sajida, who spends their nights in prostration, wa qa'ima, uh, standing up, yakhdurul akhira, fearful of the hereafter, wa yurju rahma rabbihi, and desires or hopes for mercy from his Lord, Kul, say to him, Hal yastawa allazina ya'maluna wallazina la ya'lamu. And this is what I want to focus on. Are those who know and those who do not know equal? And this is really interesting uh, verse uh, in the Quran where it's comparing people of knowledge with people who don't have knowledge. And it's kind of left open to what this knowledge is. Now I'm saying this is self-awareness, but you know, feel free to take a, a different view on this. Then the verse says, Surely or verily, those who keep reminding themselves, yitazakkar, those who keep reminding, keep repeating, ulul albab, those are people who are of understanding. So it's saying whatever knowledge you have, need to keep reminding yourself, need to keep uh, having that uh, as, as a reminder. It's almost like when we talk about SSA, it's the reframing. Oh, I know this, this is coming from this, but I need to keep reminding myself. I need to keep reminding where, where this is coming from. Um, and the verse continues where it talks about Allazina uh, Amanu, say, O oh my servants, Kulya Bad Allazina Amanu, Ittaku Rabbakum. Now it's beautiful how self awareness and talking about self awareness and the remind, reminding yourself about um, those who know is followed by God centricity. Immediately, Self-awareness is being followed by uh, those who believe and are God conscious or have it or are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then um says Lilazina Husno Fehaza Dunya Husno Wal Ars Wardalahi Wasya. So for those who do good in this dunya, in this earth. Uh, there is goodness in it, and God's earth is vast. It's it's vast. Surely, verily, those who are patient, sabirun, will have a reward which is without measure. It's something you you can't measure. So it's a very interesting verse. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about here is the understanding of are the people who know the same as the people who don't know and how that links to God centricity and, and finding and finding God. So, so a few verses for us to look at. If you're joining us for the first time, we are a peer support organization for um, uh, Muslims and anyone else who, who needs help um, in the area of uh, 
sexual or gender identity. We offer free consultation. Uh, we have three circles now for men, which are held in English, um, Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. We have a Sunday circle for women and a Sunday circle for parents. And now also we have a second Arab uh, uh, Arab speaking circle, one on Friday and one on Sunday. I also, as well as we refer to other coaches or counselors, I also offer one-to-ones, which is usually on Friday evenings. Uh, the intent of the webinars, which are free and open, is to educate the Ummah, um, bring uh, these topics into light uh, so that there is more awareness, more knowledge, uh, inshallah, on, on these issues. So uh, we've had Richard for uh, two webinars, and this is the third webinar, which he's kindly um, uh, agreed to be on his time. Um, there is so much I can say about Richard. I mean, Richard helps us not only in these webinars, he helps us in the back seats, you know, um, you know, there's so many, I was just speaking to him earlier before this webinar where he said, oh, uh, you know, there's some really great media training. And he sat with me for an hour out of his own time and gave me fantastic tips. And I've seen Richard do this sort of work within our strong support community where he will take his free time and go to people. So, you know, how in we have the faith which says those who believe and those who do good. It's, I see that in Richard. Richard believes his mission and he does the act, you know, and and I can vouch for that. I can say that's true. And I, that it's it's admirable. It's And that's why he's a leader. He's a leader in his field because not only does he believe in his work, he, he does that and he really cares for the community. And I think that is, that is so, um meaningful it's meaningful when you have a leader who cares who wants the community to develop who wants the community to flourish um and and he's been an inspiration for you know thousands of people as you can see thousands and thousands of people um and it's you know it's a real honor for for me uh that i you know we we've had uh richard come on uh, I have all of his seven books, um, <laughs> and you know they're they're absolutely fantastic. Um, you know each one of these hits at a different topic. You know, so for being gay, nature, nurture, or both. I think that's a great starting point. Um, if you're, you know, uh, again, this just came in our parent circle. Is it nature? Is it nurture? Are we born with it? Where do we start? What does the sign say? And I think it's it's indispensable as a starting point to have that book and, and, and so on. And similarly, Straight talked about homosexuality, um, where he, he's talking about the celebrities and the celebrity culture uh, and, and, and so on. So these two books from a um, um, theoretical side, what does the sign say and, and so on? Uh, then even parenting, right? So what about parents? What about children? Uh, there's a book for parents, which we use in our parent circle. This is the book that we use. Um, it's it's easier to read. Uh, you know, it's a very easy read. And I've had so many of the parents say, ah, I need to do those exercises. I can't just skim in. I need to do those exercises because the exercises are really important in this book. Um, Rich's Home is really good because it brings uh, the topic of sex and sexuality in a way where we need to teach to our children. You know, so many times we have like, okay, how do we teach these concepts to our to our children? And I think uh, there's not enough books which are perhaps written for children in this, and it's quite unique. Um, so, so uh, 
definitely check that one out. And then uh, we had him on for the two webinars, which you saw, which was for time, touch and talk and understanding our LGBTQ loved ones. And um, time, touch and talk can be applied to anyone can be applied to any relationships. It doesn't have to do with it. There's nothing to do with SSA. And I think this is what's so great about this work. Uh, sometimes you you start this work with an SSA hat on, and then you realize, oh, this it's not about SSA. It's about people. It's about relationships, you know. Um, and it's all the same. It's all the same. So time, touch, and talk, great. Um, understanding, especially for those of us who really want to understand about touch and how healing healing that touches in our journey. Um, understanding LGBTQ loved ones, I give to everyone who starts, all clients who start, I say, read that book. It's a great start. Uh, even if you're a parent, if you're a loved one, if you have SSA, that book, I would say, is a summary of all the previous work. I would say that's it's a summary. It's a great, great summary. Um, now, if you're a counselor, if you're a therapist, or even if you're an incidental therapist, because I get a lot of calls from people saying, Ali, I have an SSA client, or I've never dealt with this before. I feel really uneasy. I don't know what to do, you know. And I refer them to the therapist guide because it's, uh, it's great. It's I read it in two days. It's it's you know it's a quick read. Uh, it it's not overwhelming. It it gets the point through very uh compactly. Um, and then for those who want to actually you know um uh build this as part of their um let's say uh. Uh, portfolio in terms of the counseling work they do to pick uh, to pick uh, assisting people with SSA. Then the manual is which which is the most recent publication uh, is 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 brilliant and that's what I've I've been going uh, recently through. Um, so you can find all of this on on the website. The website is bathinfo.org. Bath meaning positive approaches to healthy sexuality. So as I said, I'm not gonna take more of your time and I'm gonna give it give the floor to to Richard. Thank you so much, Ali. You gave the short talk that I was going to present for me. <laughs> you did it. And I will succinctly do it with maybe hit it a few other notes. So here we go. Hello, all. For those of you who don't know me, I've been a psychotherapist for 35 years. Since I was a child in elementary school, I experienced same-sex attraction. I might be the age of some of your grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> My wife and I will have been married next month. It will be 44 years. Wow. So very longer than most of you are alive. And uh, we have a 40-year-old son. He's a medical doctor and researcher. We have a 39-year-old daughter. She's a high school English teacher. And we have a 29-year-old son who's taking over the world. He's <laughs> a real great big personality. This is, uh, yeah, this is my wife. She hails from Korea. And those are our three children. And it was always my dream to get married and have a family. And I did so much therapy. Most of it was useless because they did not know how to help me. It was a long and painful journey. And without the help of some incredible heterosexual men, I wouldn't be here today. They reparented me and mentored me. And then there were some amazing women who did the same for me. And my wife has endured my craziness for all the 44 years. <laughs> I wanted to mention something that perhaps all of you have heard in the media 
It's called conversion therapy. And I want you to know that this term, conversion therapy, is a socio-political constructed term by the LGBTQ plus activists, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer plus activists. There's no such thing as conversion therapy. It doesn't exist in the scientific literature. There's no research about it because it does not exist. It was created to denigrate people, therapists in particular, who do this type of work. However, see this movie I put up here? It's on Netflix called Boy Erased. Perhaps some of you have heard of it and watched it. You can see the description. Sent to a conversion therapy by his faith-based par faith parents, a young man struggles to reconcile his sexual identity with his family's Christian beliefs. It's based on an autobiography of a man who, when he was a teenager, was sent by his pastor father and, you know, uh, mother to Love in Action, which is a faith-based organization. The director was John Schmidt. He's not a therapist. He's not trained. So there was no conversion therapy here. It was a faith-based Christian organization. And it's the movie is horrible, what goes on there. And since that time, the director, John Schmidt, left and he got married to a man. <laughs> and he said, people don't change. So obviously, he never did his own healing work. Okay, my point is this. There is no such thing as conversion therapy. The word this term was created to try to make, and, and one other misnomer that they do, they lump in therapists and faith-based ministries and anybody else who tries to help people with unwanted SSA into one basket. But therapists are therapists and the ministries are ministries and others in churches, that's, you know, all faith-based. So they say that this kid went to conversion therapy camp. It wasn't, there's no such thing as conversion therapy. So I just want to let you know it doesn't exist. In 1989, this book was published called After the Ball. It's been known as the Homosexual Manifesto and it blueprinted how the activists would homosexualize the world. And they did an incredible job I talk about this in the Understanding Our LGBTQ Plus Loved Ones. I got permission from the publisher, Random House, to do a brief outline of the book. And the reason I'm mentioning it, mentioning it is because they have a three-step approach called desensitize, jam, and convert. So I found it so hysterical that they're trying to convert people to believing in, you know, born that way cannot change, which is not scientific or script scripturally based, but they promoted this paradigm and they said, we're going to convert everybody. And then decades later, they take the same term conversion and they denigrate anyone who's offering help and hope to people with unwanted SSA. So there is no such thing as conversion therapy. It does not exist. If you go online, you will see a hundred definitions of what it is because it's not scientific. It's a political term. I just wanted to say that from the outset. Three main points, which are spoken about in all the books, as Ali mentioned. There's no compelling scientific evidence that anyone is determined from birth to experience SSA. There are hormonal, genetic, and biologic studies, they are not replicated. Many of them have been debunked. And although there may be some predilection for SSA, if there's anything genetic, what other therapists have seen is a hypersensitive temperament. Now that's not necessarily going to predict somebody to experience SSA. And number two, no one simply chooses to experience SSA. It's a confounding of variables, familial, environmental, and perhaps physiological causes. 
And number three, people can be hopeful in their choice to change from same sex to opposite sex attracted. This is scientifically documented over decades and decades of research that change is possible so you can be hopeful. What is the basic meaning behind SSA? Two pillars that hold up SSA. Number one, wounds of the past that have never healed sufficiently and needs for love, legitimate needs for love and bonding. Dr. Elizabeth Moberly, who hailed from the UK, wrote in her book, it's a reparative drive. And then Dr. Joseph Nicolosi Sr. further developed this concept. Reparative drive means there's pain in the heart and there are needs for bonding that never took place. So the same-sex drive is one of reparation, to repair, to heal, to fulfill those needs. Secondly, therefore, it's an emotionally based condition. It's not about sex. There were normal needs for bonding and attachment and connection in pre-adolescent years. Then when the person goes through adolescence, those unmet needs become sexually driven. And the world mistakenly says, oh, you're gay, you're lesbian, you're bi, you're transgender, whatever. And those are all man-made labels. It's not about sex. It's a need for connection, attachment, and bonding. And third, therefore, it represents gender detachment, a disidentification with one's own gender. If a man feels his masculinity, he will be attracted to the opposite, a woman. If a woman feels her femininity, she'll be attracted to the opposite, a man. And let me show you a little animation that I created, just as an example. Now, this is a generalization, and it's about a, a guy who's seeking to hook up with another guy. It could have been a girl and hooking up with a, a woman. So here he is, and he's reaching out to another guy. He's close to his mom while growing up detached from his father, close to his sister. The boys at school school bully him, call him names, faggot, queer. And he's close to the girls at school, his mom, sister, so surrounded by the feminine. Inside of him is a hurt little boy, even though he's in an adolescent and then adult body. And those two guys both have wounded inner children inside, and they're both trying to get from each other what neither one of them has experienced, which is why statistically, according to the research of gay, you know, identified researchers, these male relationships don't last. And if they do, they have sex outside of their couple almost all of the time. Of course, this is just a generalization. So even though you're you're a practicing Muslim or Christian or Jew or whatever your faith is, still that wounded child is inside so you can never pray this thing away. It needs healing and the fulfillment of needs in healthy relationships. I talk about, in almost all the books, the 10 potential causes of SSA. There's not enough time to go into this. It's never one variable. It's a confounding of several of these variables that create SSA in a man or a woman. And the severity of the hurts of the past, the wounding will have a direct impact upon the amount of time and effort it will take to heal. So what does healing look like succinctly? Number one, identifying the root causes of SSA. And as Ali was saying, SSA is not unlike other people's issues. We're all the same. It just manifests differently. Secondly, resolve, heal, work through each issue. In therapy, you can't just talk it away. That's part of it. However, you have to 
release the pain and get number three, healthy love from members of the same sex. Guys have to heal with other guys, women with other women. It's a prerequisite for coming into the fullness of one's gender identity. This is a, a little a chart a graphic that I created for the parents group. However, it's applicable to anyone who's going through SSA and wants to heal. So this represents a guy, a square. It could be a woman. And he needs his dad, if his father's capable of giving love, grandfather, uncles, um, male mentors, and male friends. They need to encircle him. And the more men, the better. He needs to heal with and in the presence of healthy men. And even some of those guys, they don't have to know he's dealing with SSA per se. It's just intimacy and closeness. Sans the sex, no sexual relations. The women, the mother, the grandmothers, the aunts, the other wives, they're praying for him and his healing. And then God will do the rest. So this is a this is what everyone needs <laughs> to resolve either unwanted, and I have employed this program with the parents who have gay identified kids, and it works as well. Of course, it takes time. As Ali was saying, I cannot believe I'm dumbfounded that God did seven books through me. Wow. <laughs> I'm I'm blown away because I never, ever in my life envisioned myself as a writer. <laughs> I, anyway, yeah, okay. The first book was in 1993 and it was called Alfie's Home. And it's autobiographical and it's also taken from a, a case studies of a lot of former clients. I was going to republish it, and my youngest son said, please don't call it Alfie's Home. So this was published in 93, and Alfred was born in 95. And so I said, okay, son. So <laughs> it re-released in 2022 as Rich's Home. It has really beautiful illustrations. Uh, the illustrator is actually from Pakistan, and he did a, a like a phenomenal job. And it's like Ali was saying, it's a good tool to use to help educate children. The second book is called Coming Out Straight, which was published in the year 2000. And uh, I, again, I didn't ever, I never envisioned myself a writer, but but my clients kept saying, you've got to write this down. You have to write it down, what I was doing, the therapy with them, because there was no, uh, uh, there were no books at that time to really give a step-by-step -step analysis of how to resolve unwanted SSA. Since it was written many years ago, I needed to update a lot of the information and edit it. So it was republished in 2020 as being gay, nature, nurture, or both, which with a, with a much more uh, <laughs> uh, culturally appropriate cover. The basic content, it goes into the 10 potential causes. And I give a lot of different examples from former clients. And then a four-stage model for resolving unwanted SSA. I think this is one of my greatest contributions to the literature of resolving unwanted SSA. I've never seen it mapped out. So strategically, what needs to happen and what are the tasks mm. of each stage? And I use a case study of this guy going through the four stages. And I give many therapeutic modalities, what to use to help healing occur. And every other chapter is a beautiful story from former clients in their own words. 
and how they resolved their SSA. And many of them are now married with children, married to the opposite sex. The next book was in 2007, entitled Gay Children, Straight Parents, A Plan for Family Healing. I did groups for many, many years with parents. In fact, back in the day, there was no internet yet. We did teleconferencing wow. classes. <laughs> so I never saw or met most of the parents. They were from all over the USA, some from other countries, and they would call in every week for two hours. And most of them didn't have a clue what to do, how to help themselves and their children. So in prayer one night, be careful what you pray for. I was screaming out to God, what can I do? What can we do to help these parents? And then God said in my prayer, write the book. And I cursed because I have a very real relationship with God. <laughs> Again, writing is not my favorite thing to do. It's so painful. And so, well, not totally. The book goes into 12 principles for family members and friends who have SSA loved ones. And as Ali was saying, the parents say, whoa, there's so much to do in the book. So I always tell them, this is not a book. And most of my books are not just books to read. They're books to do. So when people email me, oh, what can I do? Read the book, <laughs> practice what it says. That's the being gay, you know, nature, nurture, or both. And uh, the Gay Children, Straight Parents book. And then there's beautiful stories of success from parents themselves. Uh, one a story of success was a mom and dad, and they actually had two daughters who were living lesbian lives. In the book, they said there was one, but there was actually two daughters. And today they're both married, the daughters to men, and they have five grandchildren. It's just amazing. And there's other stories as well. That's gay children, straight parents. My theme in the whole book and in all my work is whoever loves the most and the longest wins. So even I say you have kids who are living a gay life or lesbian or whatever, whoever loves the most and the longest wins, keep loving no matter what. Be the last one standing. Be the love of God with skin for him or her. Or now we can say they, right? <laughs> And then in 2010, I wrote Straight Talk About Homosexuality, The Other Side of Tolerance. And it needed updating and editing. So it was renamed Understanding Our LGBTQ Plus Loved Ones, published in 2022. I forget, 2022. Yes, yes. 2022. And the basic content, there's three sections. One is a history of the gay rights movement. And I talk about that book I showed you called, you know, After the Ball. And I write down the key points, how they strategize to homosexualize the USA and the world. These are two Harvard, one was a neuropsych, uh, neuros, uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. And the other one was social marketing, uh, expert and they knew how to change the whole landscape and it's brilliant what they did so that's in this chapter history of the gay rights movement and the motivation behind the movement second chapter is the science of ssa as ali said very simply said are people born this way or not or is it a combination what are the major factors the third chapter took me one year to do that chapter I read the autobiographies of five celebrities in the USA who identify as gay or lesbian. And I put the chart of the 10 potential causes with their names and then check marks if they had those causes of their SSA. And it's so clear that <laughs> they're not born that way. It is phenomenological it's due to environmental temperamental and family factors familial familial and it's so easy to see and i use their own words in the chapter from their autobiographies fourth chapter words that hurt 
and words that heal. And finally, chapter five, loving our lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, plus loved ones the right ways, how everyone can participate. And also every other chapter is a story of how someone went through this therapy and changed. Uh, last year, I wrote another book. <laughs> no more books coming out of me. This was only because I was telling Ali earlier, I have a publisher in Turkey. And they said, would you please write an overview for therapists of the different protocols? So I prayed about it. And I screaming, I always fight with God, and yet I do it. And so this is, as Ali said, it's a very brief overview of the protocol. Um, well, it's, I put lessons learned in a lifetime. Many things I've learned doing this therapy. And then how to help those who experience unwanted SSA, the step-by-step -step treatment plan, and then how to assist parents, family members with SSA loved ones. And I gave the syllabus uh, in this in this book uh, for a parent support group. I think that alone is, makes it so invaluable because it's 12 sessions. And you will see, I give lots of homework. So clients, I give lots of homework. The parents, everyone gets homework. And it's not they come and, oh, change me or change my kid. Well, get to work. First work on yourself. And then I give lots of resources and organizations. Strong support, of course, is in there. And then at the end of last year, I published the Counselor Training Program Manual. It was originally published in 2008, and it uh, needed updating, editing, and I always had the dream to, to publish it. It was just a spiral-bound thing, and it's a really big thing manual and it's for therapists and counselors it's from the moment the client walks in to the moment he or she graduates and how to prepare them if they wish for dating and mating and then how to help the parents and the step-by-step -step guide and then uh taking care of the therapist which is critical and uh, about the socio-political information and media prep and media training. I never imagined I would be on TV and doing all that I did, and I never wanted to do any of it. And God called me to do it, and so I learned from great experts. And the final book, oh, so the protocol in the Counselor Training Program Manual, Understanding, Resolving, Unwanted SSA, the plan for parents. Oh, yes, I also included in this manual process training protocols. Some of you, many of you attended the Journey into Manhood Weekend or New Warrior or maybe Women Within. And I was doing healing seminars before you know, the gym weekend was created. I did it for so many years. In fact, Rich Weiler helped facilitate, co-facilitate some of those healing seminars. So in this manual, I included different protocols for group work and healing seminars. And then finally, the family healing session protocol. This is ingenious. I learned it from Dr. Martha Welch of Columbia University. The family healing session is a two day event. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's two days, eight hours each day with the father, mother, and all the children. And it's not about SSA, it's about taking out the trash, resolving relationships uh, between father, mother, father and children, mother and children, children and children. That's why it's two eight hour days. It's worth years of therapy. It's not a talk session. It's deep, amazing healing work. And it's extraordinary. And I've been doing it, what now, 28 and a half years, thanks to Dr. Welch. And we improved upon it. The final book is Healing Humanity, Time, Touch, and Talk. And this was like a pet project. 
in January of 1997, God gave me this vision and a time, touch, and talk. And I would write notes and post-its over the years. And finally, I went away for a month in 2018, and I got it all written down, the major outline, <clears throat> and then took the rest of the year, and it was published in 2019. And the time section is about personal healing, time with God, self, others, and I give lots of different healing protocols. And as Ali was saying, it, we're all the same. Our issues manifest differently. The touch section, I go into the science of healthy touch. We live in such a sexualized world today. And if our needs for healthy touch are not met, we will sexualize them. And sex will never fulfill those core needs. So I give lots of exercises for healthy touch, individually, family, and community. And finally, talk, communication skills for effective listening and sharing. And then about different personality styles and temperaments. As many of you know, I'm one of the only ballsy therapists who will talk about healthy touch. It's such an issue that most therapists don't want to get near. They're so frightened, but not me. <laughs> we cannot live without touch. It's a requirement for all of us. We must heal in the presence of others because we were wounded in the presence of others. This is, uh, wow, this is about 15 years ago, these photos with my youngest son, who's now almost 30. So it's hugging and holding him on the sofa and arm around the shoulder and then, uh, you know, supporting him from the back. So this is an example of some healthy touch that you can get with your mentors, with your parents, if they're healthy enough. If not, don't go there. Find healthy mentors. As Ali said in the beginning, our organization is PATH, Positive Approaches to Healthy Sexuality. And our website is pathinfo.org. And for the Healing Humanity, we're timetouchandtalk.com. If you're looking for therapists, you can go to our pathinfo.org website slash organizations. You will find strong support there. And also therapeuticchoice.com which is the Alliance for Therapeutic Choice and Scientific Integrity. For those, well, older folks, you may have heard of NARTH. NARTH uh, became the Alliance for Therapeutic Choice. Whew. That's it. Thank you. I will stop sharing and we can just do Q&A. Fantastic. Well, uh... I don't know how it feels having written seven, seven books. I think you said it's a curse, but I think uh, <laughs> right. the the first book, <laughs> yeah. the first book which you wrote, um, which was then called Coming Out Straight, and yep. I remember you writing the need for you to put your journey and your learning into yes. a book, and it was so beautiful from from that first book the need god asked you to do more and more books yes and and i know what you what you just said in terms of there was nothing there was nothing at that time there was no structure um and especially a book which is easy to read you know it doesn't need a right. counseling degree right. to yeah. to understand um is 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 truly remarkable and I, and I do feel that uh you know we have this concept that uh once we pass away we leave material which is going to live afterwards and I and I do feel that your books are leaving that legacy thank you which which will continue years years forward and I, uh, you know, and, and people who've interacted with those books and 
and and have life life changing moments. Um. So yeah, I really want to honor the discipline it must have taken you to create those those seven books and um we have this term called uh in muslim circles satkai jariya which means that uh, a charity that keeps going even after you're not there and i think it's like a um a beautiful example of that of uh change which you brought there was nothing for SSA and then there was nothing for parents. You know, there were so many things, uh, uh, so many avenues. And now for counselors as well, where there was an, you know, like a set program, which right. you can easily take in and digest as the Turkish publisher wisely, wisely <laughs> said. So, so yeah, I think these are key books where there, there was a gap and now that gap's, fulfilled with those with those books so thank you thank you so much um so as as you know this is q a um so please uh start with the q a we have a, a salam from uh bel uh, bomadin bel khater salam alaikum it's it's very lovely to to see you here hello um we have another question. I know I really need to embark on my journey of healing with stage one, detaching from all homosexual desires. But for the first time, I have been able to get intimate with a man. I'm torn between my heart and mind. I know I shouldn't invest in this, but I'm absorbed in this idea that I'm being loved by him. How can I start with this internal battle. Mm. Thank you. Before I answer that directly, I wanted to say in the beginning that I just want to be perfectly clear. I love everyone in the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer plus community. I'm not saying good or bad. That's up to the individual their journey. So just that disclaimer. Very important. Very yes. important. I believe this is a human rights issue and someone has the right to live a gay or lesbian, bi, trans life, non-binary, whatever. And someone has the right to explore resolving unwanted SSA as well. Regarding your particular conundrum, uh, well, you started by saying you know you should, well, you have to begin stage one and you should stop the homosexual activity. Yes and no. Yes, definitely start stage one work with a competent therapist or counselor. And it will take time to transition. I call the first stage transition. So if you're having a relationship or engaged in a re relationship, as you said, feeling loved, okay. And you can still start doing the other parts of stage one. It will take time to create a new network of support. I do say in stage one, cutting off from playgrounds, playmates, play things, playgrounds where you would go, gay bars and such, or parks and playmates, having engaging in homosexual activity and play things, internet porn, etc. And it will take time. So be kind to yourself. I'm not judging you. There's no judgment here. It's a matter of your goals. If you want to resolve unwanted SSA, step by step, you will begin to... Well, you know, before you cut something off, you need to create something which is greater and bigger and more wonderful. So you need a support group of people who will hear you, listen to you, 
pray for you, cry with you, hold you. And you need men, men, mentors, male mentors. And that's going to take time to find good, warm bodies who are willing to travel with you, listen to you. Some will hold you. Others will mentor you in different ways. So be kind to yourself. It will take time. And when you develop, I mean, I could give you so many examples of guys who were engaged in homosexual relationships. And then heterosexual men were coming alongside of them, loving them, listening, holding them. And then they just cut off from the homosexual activity because they felt the healthier love. And yeah. I mean, I had a male partner for three years, and man, did I try to make it work, and it didn't. Yep, so be kind to yourself. It takes time and start doing the work, the healing work. Thank I hope you. that helps, yep. Next question is, I would like to ask you about your opinion on experiencing deep infatuation towards a brother who also experiences SSA and how safe it is to practice healthy touch and bonding with this individual. Mm -hmm. Also would like to ask about the power differential and dynamics towards masculine men. I personally see in this person and I'm drawn to them, hence discounting my own masculinity and disassociating from it. What's your suggestion? How do I draw boundaries and keep the relationship healthy, brotherly, and try for both of us to get our unmet needs met? Yeah. So I heard the, I understood the first question about a guy in the group or that you're going through healing with and attracted to each other, how to establish boundaries. The second question was being attracted to a masculine guy, which discounts your own masculinity mm -hmm. is that the same type of person or is that just like attracted to any guy so it seems like they may be two different people yeah, yeah. okay um joe nicolosi well i just want to honor dr joseph nicolosi senior i mean junior is great too senior wrote you know, the reparative therapy of male homosexuality before my book was published. And he did great work as the pioneer in this field with Dr. Elizabeth Moberly and Dr. Dean Bird. Uh, so, yeah, I need to honor him. Uh, about being attracted to a guy in the group, that's great. And about being attracted to a masculine guy, that's great. So in the group that I co that I facilitated for many years, if people were attracted to each other, I would have them, you know, we would work it out in the group. And, oh, and then I would have them, you know, if it was safe or they would stand and they say, oh, I love your chest and I really like your muscles or I can see your penis, you know, bulging, whatever. We would share it openly. And the more that was shared, then the hurt and the pain would come. So sex is on the outside. The needs for love and the wounds that haven't healed are on the inside. So working through the attraction is really healthy to get to the heart of the matter. And it won't be about sexual attractions then. We need to work backwards because we're now in adult bodies. And again, as I said, through that animation, when we hit puberty, the normal needs for bonding and connection with the same sex parent and same sex peers then became sexualized. So you're going to go through sexual feelings and you have to go and then you're going to go deeper, not have to. It, you get to go deeper. And in a safe group, it's great to share about that. I know it's humiliating. It's embarrassing. And it's really healthy. I 
was mentoring two women. One was a women with SSA and and a heterosexual mentor, and they were doing holding, and she was getting the one with SSA was getting sexually turned on, and I said, "Tell your mentor," and she wanted to die. Mm -hmm. She said, "I'd rather die." And I said, okay, you're going to mentally and emotionally die right now. Say it. And she did. And she was crying and she was crying. And I just said to her mentor, keep breathing. It's not about your beautiful bosoms. It's about her need for mommy. And the more she shared, it got down to memories of abuse and I'm not going to. Her story is in the actually being gay book originally coming out straight. And so, okay, I'm saying a lot about it. I hope you get the point. Speak it, share it. Don't just do it with him privately. Do it with a facilitator would be more, more healthy, efficacious. And you two can be close. I know there's some, you know, there's some ministries that say people in the group cannot be friends outside. I never subscribe to that. I always tell them, go support each other. And if they ever made a mistake or, you know, they were doing holding and then they took the clothes off and la la la. I say, OK, bring it into the group. Let's break it down. What you know, so we were very open and people could share anything and everything. Yeah. About the masculinity piece and seeing a guy and being enamored by his strength and then feeling bad about your own. Dr. Nicolosi wrote a lot about that and very simply said, get to know him. Because the more you take the person off of the, uh, what do you, the box or the altar of admiration, you will see he's just as screwed up and messed up and insecure as you. That's why I wrote this book. I The original title was Healing Heterosexuality, Time, Touch, and Talk. But some people were saying, well, that's a, you know. Anyway, I meant it because we're all messed up people. Yeah. So um, get to know him. And the more you get to know him, you will see, oh, yeah. And uh, just as, you know, insecure, whatever is you, just in different ways. And the your admiration will become normalized and healthy. So get to know the person. Take him off the pedestal. That's what I was looking for. The pedestal of admiration. You're so wonderful. You're so this. You're, yeah. You don't know what's behind that, you know, skin. Absolutely. Verbalizing our attractions can be so yeah. uh, healing in that chain. Thank you. Um, hello, Richard. How has your insights and regards causes and consequently positive treatment changed throughout the years what things are really ineffective in resolving SSA issues? Thanks. <laughs> well, ineffective psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis contraindicated for the resolution of unwanted SSA because in that paradigm, there's a great detachment between the therapist and the client. And I went through it for four years and I'm the paragon of an example of how that does not work well. It's the, we say in the US, it's the slow boat to China. So psychoanalysis is contraindicated therapeutically for resolving unwanted SSA. Well, in the four steps I wrote, first is uh, behavioral, step one, making behavioral changes and creating a network of support. Step two is cognitive, understanding our mind and how our thoughts uh, make us feel certain ways. It's not feel, it's not the event, the feelings, and then we, you know, it's not the event, and then we, oh, <laughs> ABC, 
It's the activating event, the belief system, the belief, the belief and, then, and then the consequential consequence. feelings. Mm -hmm. So in the second stage, we get a handle on our thinking about ourselves and other people. And then I begin, have the client begin inner child healing. Inner child is just another name for the unconscious. And I give lots of homework. There's a great book called Recovery of Your Inner Child by Lucia Cappuccione. And I have all my clients do the exercises there. And then stage three is psychodynamic. And now we're getting into the heart of healing, the wounds of the past. Of course, there may be grieving in stage one and two. However, it's very important to create the support network structure and uh, beginning to make behavioral changes step by step, not all at once. And then thinking, getting a handle on our negative thinking or cognitive distortions. And then psychodynamic, we go to the root causes and do deep inner healing work and grieve and get angry and scream. And I've seen with so many people who go to ministries, they never do their internal healing work. And that's why several people, sorry, John, you know, who was in love and action running that behavioral based, horrible judgmental program, they never did the deep work. And so stage three is really grieving and bonding with healthy men. That's why in the stage one, you have to create lots of healthy men around you. And I know it's hard to do. It was very difficult for me. I got rejected so many times. And finally, I, you know, cried and screamed out to God. And I just kept looking until I found healthy male heterosexual mentors. So I had them when I was going through my deep grieving of stage three. And I'm a very kinesthetic, tactile man. And I needed touch very much to heal. And that's stage three. And then stage four is psychodynamic healing opposite gender wounds. So for the man, healing mother issues and wounding with other women. For the woman, healing father issues or with other men. So those are the stages of healing that one needs to go through to get your heart, mind back and stand in your power. And as Richard said earlier, that full model is really unique and so many have applied it. So many people have applied that model and it's it's been consistent since book one and it's still consistent today so i i i i, I love that uh next question um is i'm 29 years old living in europe uh, i moved here three years ago and in these years my ssa escalated i feel lonely many times and tried to avoid same-sex enactment, but at the same time struggle with visual or live media on internet. Being said, I aspire to get married, have kids, but I don't know when I'll feel ready. What do you think could be a suitable time as I don't want to be righteous to a, uh, as I don't want to be righteous to a future partner being attracted to her, fulfilling all responsibilities, uh, of a husband, it's a challenge for me each day I deal with. Are you, is he married now or no? No, he's not no. married. Um, so he's struggling with SSA. Yeah. He would like to get married. Got it. Yeah, how to do that. Find a good therapist. Uh, get in a support group. I mean, Ali just said there's three men's groups a week. <laughs> And so get a good counselor, therapist, and get in groups. There's strong support. There's other groups online from Jim, you know, uh, from Brothers Road, Brothers Road. Mm -hmm. 225. And so get into online support groups. And I know there's so much temptation 
uh, online, I mean, <laughs> boom, right away, you can have instant physical gratification. I'm not a subscriber of the don't do this and the don't do that school because the more you try to put something down, the bigger it's going to get. So you need to learn, as I was saying earlier, to fulfill yourself in healthy ways. You said you're isolated. So find friends, find people that you share common interests. If you go to a mosque, you know, I don't know if they have men's groups or study groups, get into a group. If you are a Christian, get into a Christian, you know, group, uh, whatever your faith is. Um, if you're not a practicing in your faith, then find, if you like movies, find a movie group. If you like reading, find a book group. Get into groups where people share the same passions and desires. And of course, if you experience, as you said, unwanted SSA, get into a group or several groups so you can get out of loneliness. And I think, you know, I don't know if in the, in the group you share your names and contact information, then you can reach out to a fellow struggler or a couple, you know, and develop relationships and share. And don't worry about getting married now. You're nowhere near that. <laughs> you have to go through the three steps before you're ready. So one, you know, guy, a very faithful Muslim was saying to me, oh, my family wants to, you know, engage me with a woman. Do you think I should do it? And I said, 100% not. You're not ready. I said, maybe in a year and a half to two years, uh, based on where he was at, where he's at now. You need to become the man that God wants you to be first before you can be a man with a woman. And then you will need to understand also the feminine. And so you may have to first resolve issues if you had them with your mother. My issues were with my mother were like as big as Mount Everest. And I had to deconstruct that mountain and feel healthy feminine love. And I did healing work with both my father and mother. They were never able to do their own work. However, I got my pain out with them and i made them hold me <laughs> my father this stiff monument of a man and i cried and cried in his arms and it broke him at least for that time period and i had to heal with other men because he was unable to sustain that so don't worry about marriage yet first be a man among men and work through all those issues, and then you'll be ready to be a man with a woman. And believe that God is preparing the right woman for you. And I say to guys who resolved unwanted SSA, you're either going to marry a woman who's done her own healing work, or a woman who comes from a beautiful family, and she has an abundance of love to give. And maybe it's a combination of the two. So believe that God is preparing her as he is preparing you. Don't think about marriage yet. Do your work and get into relationships and out of isolation. I love that. I think it's, especially in our community, there's a, you know, a push for marriage yeah. because they think, oh, SSA, sexual, get right. married. And and I, I really like how you said no, <laughs> you said quite firmly no, yep. uh, because that is, and, and you're right, even in support group, we, we encourage people to share, uh, uh, have, have the group on their own, take the contacts, create a group on their own. Right. Um, so um, because those relationships are so meaningful. Oh, yeah. Um, and, so so yes no right. I, I fully agree yeah. um 
Okay, so someone's saying yes. The question that was before was the same person. So thank you, thank you for, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, there's another question. I have grown a lot in my masculinity. I have healthy relationships with other men, but I have a problem with attachment dependency. Once I get to know a guy, sometimes I get too attracted. And it's like I need so much love of him and creates a burning sensation in my chest. What yeah. I do is to cut ties and the sensation will pass after some time. But I don't want to be living in fear of getting attached and wanting too much. I think I have an abandonment wound, but I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> uh, labels like that abandonment wound... Uh, they're too they're too clinical uh dr no Nicolosi senior and i i put it in a couple books and i especially i broke it down here the five types of relationships so with men, so OSA, opposite sex attracted men. So be in relationship with the opposite OSA men who know about your struggle and love and support you. Be in relationship with OSA men who do not know about your struggle and support you and you support them or good friends. And be in relationship with other guys who are going through the same journey. SSA strugglers and male mentors. They may be elders who will pour into you. And you cannot find, like with OSA people, you can't find one person who's going to meet all of your needs. So if you do, if like you're saying, you're so attracted or you get so connected and then you cut off because it's too much. Um, it's very important, like a mentor to have like a sports mentor or a financial mentor or a spiritual mentor and a mentor who's more acclimated to physical touch. So find different types of mentors. Of course, they can be in the other categories. And then eventually, number five is you mentor others who are on the journey that you're it's like uh 12 step groups it's called a sponsor you then become a mentor sponsor for the younger ones not just in physiological age but on the journey of healing when you're attracted to a guy and it gets overwhelming for you if he understands about your wounds and he can hear your pain express it i'm in love with you i'm so overwhelmed it's that where the healing will take place because the wounding like you're saying abandonment issue obviously there was lack of salient attachment with dad with male for me i was beaten up all the time by my older brother i just was so physically abused and sexually abused by an uncle and my dad was a raging, you know, monster to me when I was a kid. So I felt the same way to my mentors. I wanted to, I use the analogy, put my hose in them and suck out everything. I just couldn't get enough. And it was because of the wounds. And when I was able to grieve the pain of the past and be loved by them, eventually that need you know that seemingly unfathomable need for that connection it waned as i felt better about myself as i became more of a man so that's why i teach like communication skills in step two uh or transition grounding stage I call this the getting happy stage. You don't wait till you're resolved everything. You have to get happy in the here and now. Learn good communication skills, personally and professionally. So the more you put yourself out there, not saying you're 
personal stuff. But if your boss is mistreating you and you're just taking it, if you're being used and you're not getting a fair salary, you're hurting yourself. That will manifest as, oh, I want this guy. I want this guy. I can't get enough. It's misplaced need. The need is for you to stand up, be a man and say to your boss, I love my job. I love working with you. And I am doing blank, 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 blank. And it's too much for me. I either need a pay raise or those uh, activities need to be resourced to other employees. And of course, you practice this a lot before you say such things. So the more you stand up and share your voice, that's just one example. Personally and professionally, set boundaries with people. You will feel less of a need for a man to compensate for your lack of masculinity because you will be a man by sharing your truth in a responsible way, in a loving way with family and friends and co-workers. And the more you do this and do the, the other work, also that need for filling up with another guy will be reduced. I hope that makes some sense. Thank you. Very thorough response. Thank you for that. Yeah. Hi, Richard. Have you met clients that are attracted exclusively to old men and like to spy on them? And how different might the healing journey of such clients be? Well, I'm an old man. I will be very complimented. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 71. I'll be 72 this year. Um, I have I ever met a client, ex, you know, exclusively attracted to older men and wanting to spy on them? I guess not in particular. I've had a lot of guys with fetishes, foot fetishes, underwear fetish, clothing fetishes. Uh, I, I guess I want to say it's, how do I say this? To me, it's not a, it's not so unique uh, in that, oh, I'm just attracted to older men and want to spy on them. There's always a reason. Or there's always reasons, just like a particular, I'm not paralleling that or correlating it to a, a fetish per se. It's just, there's reasons behind it. So if I was working with you, I would, in our work together, I would prescribe the symptom. Okay, see, you know, imagine now an older guy and I'd like you to talk to him and tell him what you're thinking and feeling and what you need and want. And through exploring all of that, now don't go to the older guy and do that with him. <laughs> that would be unsafe for you. Work through this with a competent therapist who can help you explore what's behind it. I mean, my, I guess my knowing after 35 years is there's some inner child wounding there regarding a grandfather or maybe there was some abuse. I didn't know that I was sexually abused until I was 30 and in my therapy. And it was like, so work with a good therapist that you can explore the history of this desire and where it originates and what the meaning of it is. Then you'll find the gold, which is your heart. So don't feel bad about it. There's always a uh, meaning. I had this guy, he was not dealing with SSA and he loved to wear women's clothes, married, two very wonderful kids. They were late teens then. 
and he loved to wear women's clothes and put on the women's uh, wig. And he came to our support group one time. The group was very mixed, men, women, SSA, non-SSA. And through therapy, we went back to the origin of him being comforted. That's what it was all about for him. He was comforted by the clothes. He was listening to his parents scream and fight. And then they divorced. And wearing the girl clothes, oh, it was like he could breathe. And he was very sensitive, not just SSA people are sensitive. He was very sensitive and the clothes were comforting. So he couldn't deal with his wife and the kids and all the stresses of life. So putting on those clothes and the underwear and the wig, oh, he was in heaven. It made perfect sense. So had to help him work through the pain of the screaming and the fighting. And then he needed more like good communication skills and sharing himself more and setting appropriate boundaries at work and et cetera. So you'll find the meaning of the attraction to older men and spying on them. There's, it's trying to teach you something. Work with a good therapist. Thank you. Hi, Richard. I appreciate your service to this field. I resonate with your program. In order to start the healing process, would you recommend reading the books first and then going on to therapy? Uh, start with the uh, beginning, which is the being gay, formerly coming out straight. Uh, read that, listen to it. It's audible. and get in find a good therapist in a group yeah do it simultaneous you don't have to read the book first and then find a therapist find a good therapist make sure that he is competent you need someone who's skilled like ali and has been working with people successfully and get into a group because you will need to create a new family of choice like the guy who moved to Europe, you need a new family of choice. Surround yourself with people who know you, who appreciate you, who love you for who you are. So yes, read and simultaneously start therapy. It's like I write, my style of writing uh, is very conversational. So you won't find a very detached you know, psychotherapist who's giving you psychobabble. Of course, I include psychological terms and things, but it's all very uh, understandable and approachable. Yeah. Would you, and it, would you say it needs to be a same sex therapist? Does it does it matter? Same. Ideally, ideally, uh, it's good for a man to work with a male therapist and for a woman to work with a female therapist. And uh, because there will be a lot of transference in the process of, you know, anyway, we don't have to go into all that. So, yes, ideally work with a male therapist. Dr. Maria Valdez was an amazing psychologist, and uh, you've heard me speak of her the other times. And she worked with predominantly men who dealt with SSA. She was a Catholic therapist and worked with a lot of Catholic men in New York City. And she understood they needed male mentors. So she set up a triadic relationship with the client herself and the priest or the spiritual director. And the client gave permission for them all to share with each other. And so he was being mentored by a male, you know, a good male spiritual director, and she was doing great therapy. Ideally work with a, and she was having tremendous success. My only, you know, sadness of her is that she didn't write a book about her therapy, but I've heard a lot of great stories of her work. So ideally get a therapist of the same sex and read the book and start working. Yeah. Conscious of time, I think it's a few minutes, so we'll... Take a few more questions. Um, 
this is from actually one of our parents uh, in, in the circle. Um, how can we get our other children to open the door to their sibling, the sibling who has SSA, and be welcoming? So having someone who has SSA yeah. uh, identifies as gay, uh -huh. um, and but we're trying as a parent, you're trying to bring them back. But you have another child who yeah. who's wondering why are you showering them with love? Why are you yeah? Why are you being be, being so nice to to this yeah? Mm -hmm. As the parent with a gay identified child and of having other children as well, it's very. You must be very savvy and intelligent in creating a support network for your child. If your other children are prejudiced, uh, if they're very religious, I say that in a maybe judgmental way, toward their gay identified sibling, you must be careful in trying to get them on the team. Because so if yeah. <laughs> okay, as the parent, you need to create a team around your child. You saw in the beginning, I showed you the child in the middle and lots of men around him and then the women supporting. If you're the siblings can be part of that support network and they're open to it, wonderful. If they're bigots, <laughs> if they're gay affirming, you must be very wise and savvy and smart how you're going to do this. So if it's a gay identified child and if it's a sibling who's totally raw, raw, gay, gay, you can't tell them about the support network you're creating because they're going to go tell their sibling, wow, mom and dad are out to change you and don't buy into this BS. If the child, like you were saying, is saying, why are you showering so much love? And they're open, give them the, 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 the understanding book. Give this to your kids, the others to read, like understanding our LGBTQ plus loved ones. Then, because I say, like, at the end of the chapters of former clients or persons who went through this, I say, okay, this is what you could do specifically, how you could help such a person. So your other children will know specifically what they can do to help their other, you know, the SSA or the gay identified brother or sister. And they'll help, it'll help them understand this whole, why you're showering so much love, you know, on that child. And be careful. Don't show favoritism. Like, don't put all of your energy into that one child. You need to, if it's three, you need to give that much love to each. Otherwise, they will feel jealous. And like you said, they said, why are you loving so much? So be mindful of jealous children. They all want equal amounts of attention. I don't know the age of you know the kids you're talking about. However, be wise. And this doesn't just happen in families with an SSA child or gay identified. It's, you know, a child with a particular problem and all the focus of the parents goes to that child and the others feel left out and they will start to act out because they will do something negative to get your attention. So as parents, we must be very wise in loving each one in their unique ways. Yeah. So ideally, get them on the team. Thank you. 
Um, I know there's so many questions here, so I want to honor <laughs> Richard's time. How is it that people can uh, connect with you? Because um, we know you have your uh, path, path.info. Uh, sorry, pathinfo.org. Uh -huh. um, is that the best, best way to reach? I know you don't do therapy anymore, right. but you Correct. refer on to therapists who you yep. trained. Um, if people wanted to learn more, contact more, what, what would be the best way to do that? Well, go to the website, uh, pathinfo. Well, I mean, the email is pathinfo at pathinfo.org. Um, I didn't mention uh, if anyone wants to <laughs> training. Um, the Counselor Training Program Manual, we have the film series, which is actually in English and Arabic because it was filmed in Egypt wow. in May of 2019. So it's both in English and Arabic. That's not okay. me speaking. That's <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Shiba. Yeah. And then there is the recording that I made, the MP3 series. So for training, uh, there's the manual and the film series and uh, the MP3 series, which is on our website, pathinfo.org. Uh, yeah, and pathinfo at pathinfo.org is the email address if you wish to contact me. Um, I know there's a question saying, is this recorded? Yes, this one is recorded, so you can go go back to it and, and and so on see and I know there's so many questions and I apologize but I've not been able to go through them can all you, but can you read them quickly and then I can see if I can put stuff together sure um so uh, this one is saying hello so thankful for your testimony and know how God bless you what would you suggest to break from addiction to porn so thank you kind of covered that in your stage one in terms of behavioral model here. Yeah? Uh -huh. That's that one. Um, how would you describe severe detachment from family, especially father and bro brother of SSA, and always trying to talk with other people from family at the same time because family never feels safe? I know your story of doing bonding and forgiving your father, but what do you recommend to someone who's severely detached from their own father and brother. Mm -hmm. so this is person saying they feel severely detached from their father and brother. Mm -hmm. um, then, and please stop me. Uh, what would you recommend for resolving penis envy and body insecurity? For me, other man's penis symbolizes confidence, completeness, strength, and all masculine attributes. This makes me detached from my own body. Um, so and the question saying, what do you recommend to those men who cannot afford therapy? Um, uh, and then we've already answered this one. Do you offer therapy? Uh, May the Lord bless your effort and allow you to continue to do this service. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Happy to see you the first time. I read your book coming out straight after I analyzed the 10 factors. There are a lot of factors related to my personality or even to my birthday. It was a horrible day to my mother since she didn't have time to go to hospital. However, how can I know the key factor if applicable, specifically, if I have started the healing process with, with my, I think it means therapist, for all the possible reasons. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so there's, should I keep reading? Uh, how many more are there? Uh, there's three more. Oh, yeah, uh, keep going, keep going. How, how do I know if I'm healed? What's the point? 
of time should be like. Is the SSA feeling ever disappeared? Uh, this is another question saying this leans more to human sexuality in general. Is it possible that people can experience a certain degree of change? Could be categorized as always being bisexual. Soci, in a way, explores the possibility when it deals with sexual fluidity. And the last one is saying, is the therapist trained in treating SSA necessary? I think that means like, do they need to be trained? And mine is not trained, but seems to be attuned and we speak the same language. Mm -hmm. speak, speak the same language like English or Arabic or just like- As opposed to American expensive therapists. So yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're, they're put. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm guessing it might be a language uh, language uh, yeah, thing yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, don't mean to be funny, but the the penis one uh, sticks out. I was going to say. Uh, again, it's not about. I hear the penis envy and the size, and then I'm insecure. It's not about the penis. There's just fixation on that, and there's a message behind it. And it, as I said, with the older men issue or whatever. So that's a great topic to explore in therapy. And I would give some behavioral homework about that. And so it's very, it has, it shares a lot of truth about you. That has nothing to do with the penis, I mean, of your past. Always wounds and needs. I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, if you find your therapist is good uh, and speaks the same language, great. If he has no understanding of SSA, I haven't read one of the books. Uh, you know, the best one, well... You saw all the different books. Just I've done, you know, email correspondence with many therapists, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, in the Middle East, wherever, and they watch the film series and they use the manual. And they're finding this one woman actually in Saudi Arabia, a psychologist, and she's doing fantastic work with male clients, understanding they need male mentors and such. So just suggest to your therapist to read some of the literature to understand more specifically what would be good, you know, to help you. Any of the other questions? I forgot. I'm old. There was one which was talking about, are we bisexual? Oh, yeah. yeah thank you so much. Everyone, take your SSA and embrace it. It's not something to get rid of. You're not looking at the clock. Okay, at what time and day will it finish? It's not the point. Your SSA is connected. It's your soul. Your psyche working to get your attention. Again, hurts in the heart that have not healed legitimate needs for love. Many haven't totally moved on or been able to resolve it because there's still stuff in there. So don't worry about what is the date and time I will finish with this. And my SSA will go away and I'll be attracted to women and I'll get married. Or if it's you're a woman and I'll be, you know, it's not a it's a message. And the more you love that part of you, I'm not saying acting on it. I'm saying listening to it. What is it trying to teach you? Just like the penis thing or the old men thing. It's just a message from your soul. And that's why we who have had to work through this shit we're more evolved 
than most people. I don't mean that we're any better. It's just we've done our healing work. And which is, again, why that's, this one had to be born for everybody else. So listen to it. I know this is so cognitive dissonant. Love it. What are you trying to teach me? Oh, I'm really attracted to that guy. Well, okay, tell me what you're attracted to. Why I want his chest, his arms, his, you know, I want him to hold me. Oh, thank you. Tell me more. Listen to it. It is your teacher. Yeah. But then put put it in, in better words. Uh, <laughs> there is, yeah. it's the cognitive dissonance of something that we're shameful of, but actually what we're yeah. shameful of is actually what we really, really want. So, so, um, yeah, listen. no, uh, you know, I, and, I, oh, one, one more thing. So Allah is not judging you for your SSA. No, because as, as Ali was just saying about shame and guilt, Allah is not thinking that. So, yeah, sorry. Beautiful. No, I thank you for for that. It's and it took me it took yeah. me so long to recognize. No, God. Yeah. God is not ashamed about my SSA. It took me so long. Yeah. To to come to that point and say, yeah. I'm right. shaming myself. God's right. not shaming. Right. And uh, and uh, I think there's Carl Rogers has that, isn't he? The curious paradox is that right. for me to change, I need to accept myself first. Yes. Right. And I needed to say, I have SSA. Hello, yay! I have SSA, yay! <laughs> for then for me to be okay with it, right? Then I could explore. Yeah myself fully rather than saying yuck i hate this part of myself right. Right. and i need to get rid of it it's yeah more like okay i have this part of myself there's a legitimate reason why i have that part of myself and god does not hate that part of myself either so absolutely no thank you thank you so much uh, for the, um, like I say, I don't think there's any population that Richard didn't think of. He, he thought about the parents, he thought about the therapist, he thought about the SSA, thought about people in the periphery in terms of relatives, and, and there's a book for, for each each one of them. And, and as I said earlier, uh, this is a legacy, you know, like you, you think like, um okay if i uh and and no doubt uh we we give love and praise to nicolosi dean bird um elizabeth uh warren the, the attachment uh, theory you know how right. that has been but actually what i find is where i think you know the the pioneering work is is bringing that into an easy readable format and and i think your books are absolutely brilliant where um you can read them and say ah okay and that conversational language and they're practical you know they're practical saying ah i need to do this right. i uh th these are the activities which i need to do they're practical they're not theoretical Right. Um, and I think that's why they've been so successful. Um, and uh, the, count, the the latest edition, which is the council training program, is very, very comprehensive. There, yeah. as, as Richard said, there's the videos, there's the audio, and then there's the book. So it's um, it's a very comprehensive uh, tool. I would say even if you're not a therapist because I know some of my parents group has already bought this book because they want to know more 
uh, and it, and it's really useful and it puts everything uh, in there and it's a very good reference. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd like to thank Richard on behalf of, of, of the team, strong support. I'm uh, you know, sure that uh, if, if we couldn't ask your question, just reach out to me and we'll see if, uh, you know, uh, if we can help in other regards. And um, as you heard Richard saying already, all of these books, they've been a blessing from God. They've, they've been a direct message for him to, to write these. Uh, so please do, uh, if you've never read a book or it's his first time, please pick one. Uh, I, uh, you know, uh, actually they're an audible now. I know some of you, some of you even say that, you know, you're not readers, you just want to listen. So they're on Amazon and uh, they're very accessible and you, you really won't regret it. And people know who come to me for one-to-one, -one, I always refer them uh, to, to Richard's book. So thank you so much for your time on, on this, your free Saturday, <laughs> Saturday afternoon uh sharing with us and uh we we continue to keep you in our prayers your all of your family and all of the the work which nobody wanted to do in your words <laughs> right. bless you for for doing that and um and the legacy that 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 you leave through all your literature thank you thank you so much thank you ali bless you strong support and your family and your great work. Thank you. God bless. God bless.